Hey everyone! Hey guys! Well, today we're talking about working from home, mm -hmm. which can be the best. Or the worst. And also the worst. Up until mm -hmm. um, about six months ago, I was working home 100% of the time. My company did not have an office. We were tiny. It was just me and another person. So we worked remote. We'd meet up at coffee shops, but essentially I worked from home. And then about the time they got an office, I left my teaching job and now I work from home because my boss also moved to Florida. So couldn't go to Florida to work. Although not a bad idea mm -mm. in these Midwest winters. Mm -hmm. Not at all. So Cody's had like, the I would say traditional office experience before mm -hmm. um, he's in a really flexible office situation now and he's also worked from home and then I've had the like intense schedule of being a teacher where everything is scheduled out for me including when I pee and my like 15 minutes to inhale my lunch and so I kind of went from like incredibly structured which if you know me is totally my style to literally no structure. So it's been, it's been an interesting adjustment. Yeah, but there are definitely some pros and cons to working from home. Um, obviously, there's the perk of wearing whatever the heck you want to. It's kind of amazing. I know everyone says you work better when you dress up and get ready, which is sometimes true for me. I wore dresses all the time when I taught, like almost every day. Mm -hmm. And this is so embarrassing. But around Christmas, I don't think I changed my clothes for like three days. Pajamas don't go bad. I don't think you have to wash them. <laughs> but also sometimes not at all because I am so much more productive when I'm comfortable. That's why I wore leggings all the time when I taught under my dresses because they were incredibly comfy and felt like pajamas. And like today I worked in my pajamas all day and I was a million times more productive than I was the other day when I actually did my hair and put on real clothes and all this. So it's not always true. Con, I would say, is just that you get, well, at least for me as an extrovert, I get really sick of not seeing people. I would just find myself staring out the window, watching people walk past, like, oh look, people. Garbage truck comes and it's like the most thrilling thing in the world. You're like, look at all this activity happening. And then I'm an introvert, so that's actually a pro for me. <laughs> my boss is also an introvert, and we, like, FaceTime every day, and sometimes we have to, like, actually call each other on the phone, and it's such a strange experience, and we're both like, what is, is this what, is this what people do? Do people talk on the phone? Oh. Another pro that I think you would agree with, too. Well, it can be a con, too, actually. It's a pro and a con, is that you have the flexibility to set your schedule. Sometimes that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Like... If I want to prep dinner and dinner's going to take a while, I can quit working a little earlier, get some dinner prep done, and then while dinner's cooking, finish my work. Like, it's kind of nice to have that flexibility. Yeah. But not having a schedule can be a con, too. Yes, it can also mean you just get distracted and start doing other things and then realize, oh yeah, I was working. I need to do that again. Not that I've ever done that no, before. Neither no, neither She loves it when, ever I, when I don't do my work and get behind <laughs> schedule. It's her favorite. Neither of us have ever done that. Do you have any good tips for working from home? For me, I would say it's equally important to have a dedicated space to work. Once we set up an office with monitor, keyboard, and mouse and everything, so I had a spot to go, it felt like going to the office with the convenience of pajamas. But there's also the other side of that, which is have some variety. When I would catch myself just not feeling productive and just sick of staring at the same wall, getting up, moving, and setting up somewhere else. So go to the kitchen table for a while, go stand at the counter, um, just change of scenery and change of position so you're not just sitting in a chair in the same spot day after day. Yeah, and along with that, getting up and stretching and moving. Mm -hmm. When you're in an office and things like that, it's a lot easier because you have to, you know, Maybe walk across the building to go to the bathroom or you're collaborating with other people. So even if you have a desk job, you're getting up at some point during the day. Mm -hmm. We are from home, kind of. I have to microwave my lunch Refill a water in bottle. my house three feet away. Like, 
So making some dedicated time to get up and stretch. I try and get up at least like once an hour, just even if it's just walk up and down the stairs or walk out and go get the mail, just something mm -hmm. to move a little bit. Um, for me, again, as the extrovert, I also would just need some people time every once in a while. So I had a hotspot plan on my phone so that I could go work anywhere. Um, so I would just go set up at a coffee shop, spend a couple bucks on coffee that, yeah, I could have made at home, but it meant that I got to sit out in real life with real humans, which as an extrovert just kind of helped recharge me a little bit so that when I was working from home again, I could be productive again. So again, that change of scenery, but getting out of the house every once in a while is good. Makes no sense to me. Buy a coffee maker. That's a good one for your yes. home. Lots of coffee. Make coffee. <laughs> all over real, stay hydrated. Yes. I know for me, when I was a teacher and out talking to people all day, it was really easy for me to stay hydrated because mm -hmm. I was constantly drinking water because I was talking all the time. And then when I sit at home, it's a lot easier to forget. I literally have to track my water. Like I have it on my to-do list to drink water so that I don't forget. For me, setting a schedule is big. Not, sometimes I'm fine without it, but a lot of times if I feel myself getting distracted, like, oh man, I really need to vacuum. Oh, I should do the dishes. And Hey, I have a few errands to run. If I feel my mind kind of getting to that spot, I make sure to set a schedule to make sure that I get all of my hours in, all of my tasks done for the day, give myself a solid schedule to follow, um, just so I don't get distracted with everything else that I want to do. I would say another big one is, which seems kind of obvious, but not necessarily. It can be easy when you work from home to sleep in. But I would say stick to your routine. Keep waking up in the morning. For us, it's always worked out because one of us always has worked outside of the home. Mm -hmm. And so we just get up when the other person gets up. But having that set routine forces you to start your day and you're a lot more productive that way. Mm -hmm. I would say another big one is uh, having a plan for food. It's easy because the fridge is right there and you can just kind of go look and see what's in there but you'll waste a lot of time if you're dealing with that. And if you don't have a plan ahead of time, um, I find myself forgetting. I, it would be like 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm like, I should probably eat my breakfast. When I worked at school, it was I always had a meal ready because I had to pack my lunch and bring it. But then I started from home and I'd be like, oh, maybe I can make this, maybe I can make that. And I would spend all this time making a meal instead of just heating up leftovers or having something that was already predetermined for me to have for lunch. Mm -hmm. And so as small and silly as that kind of seems when from working from home, having a meal plan makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. But if you work from home, we want to hear from you. What are your top mm -hmm. tips for working from home and staying productive? Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Bye.